something else. So one of them said to me, what do you think we're going to do, invade Rhode Island? Uh, got about 13, 14 million people, that, you know, not exporting communism, not exporting subversion. They're just, they're just trying to get by. So their attitude really is, is one of a little bit of wonder. Why pick on us when you, you know, you're dealing with China? There's a lot of other people with human rights problems. Why do you single out Cuba? We're 90 miles away from you. We should work together. We believe that some of the things we've recommended, we are hopeful that the Cuban government will take action on. We were somewhat surprised at the seriousness and directness of the conversation, the honesty of the conversations. And even though there is no trust, we believe some of the things that we recommended could start building that process towards uh, trust. From the United States standpoint, uh, obviously there's a danger if you start dealing with the, the Castro government and uh, they do some things and then they do something dumb like shooting the airplane down, you know you're out in the limb. So it's a, it's a very tenuous thing, but, but we hope that happens. But uh, let me turn it over now to a vice chairman of it, uh, Congressman Jim Symington, for his remarks. We'll, we'll be glad to answer questions. We'll be glad to get specifically into the recommendations uh, with you. I'm particularly interested in the drug area where hopefully they can put some Coast Guard ships and helicopters over there and work together. But, uh, Jimmy? Thank you, Lou, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As Lou mentioned, I'm from Missouri, and we'd, we'd like to be shown. We, we'd like to look at facts before we decide things. Uh, my reason for the interest in in this part of the world is partly ancestral in 1898. And we're a year away from that centennial, which has a certain gravitational pull, I hope, on some kind of events and policies. My grandfather uh, left college to go down there and try to help the Cuban people become free. And a couple years later, he married the, he later became a senator of New York, James Wads Jim Wadsworth. And then he married the, the daughter of John Hay, who'd been Lincoln's secretary, who became secretary of state during the McKinley uh, presidency and on into the Teddy Roosevelt presidency. So in 1902, when Cuba achieved her independence, four years after the victory, he held that job. And uh, all my life, I've wondered, you know, isn't it about time I took a look at what those boys were up to? So uh, that is how I became involved in this. We went down to Cuba. Uh, something I suggest all of you do. Uh, infallibility is not our strong suit. And it may be that we missed something. We probably did. We were very well briefed before we went. Department of State, the uh, Security Council folks, the Cuban American community and Freedom House and all of the folks that have very specific and very legitimate interest in that part of the world. So we got our, at least one look at, at the uh, profile of Cuba from the perspective of U.S. Uh, interests. And then we went down. And uh, I guess, as an American, you drive through the streets of Havana, the first thing you want to do is fix everything. If nothing really works, the, uh, the street lights go out at night or they're sort of parsed at different sections of town on different days because they're down from 13 million tons of oil to 8 million tons and they, and they uh, don't have the energy uh, to take care of that. Uh, parenthetically, they're building a nuclear plant. And when I asked if our people had been up there to take a look at the plant because it was a Russian-built plant, they said, no, we've invited them, but under your law, they're not permitted to come. I thought that was a little short-sighted because We'd like to be sure that American experts are very confident that if such a plant is built, that it proposes no threat either to the Cuban people or, with all due respect, to us. But we saw, as I said, you want to fix things. Uh, plumbing, I'm afraid, is not in good shape. Transportation's breaking down, trucks stop, people working on them, scratching their heads. Buses loaded with folks trying to get someplace. Long lines, rather patient. And uh, considering their circumstances, folks well-dressed trying to 
look as well as they can, go about their day. Uh, we went to see the, uh, the Cardinal, uh, Ortega, an impressive man, listens very carefully, and then waits a second and thinks, and then speaks. And he, uh, he told us that, um, he, of course, he looked forward to the papal visit. The church had taken some hard hits in the early days, <clears throat> was beginning to pull out of it, playing an important role in reaffirming uh, the Cuban character and belief. And since I'd been uh, deputy director of Food for Peace back in the old McGovern days, the early days of the Kennedy administration, I asked if they had any uh, problems with food or uh, uh, feed grain. He said, yes, we do. Uh, matter of fact, the egg consumption is going way down because the chickens aren't making it because we don't have the feed grains that they need to eat. So the egg uh, ration uh, is uh, low. Well, it occurred to me we had a lot of feed